we are also going to figure out the electric field that exists inside the sphere. So now we're going to look at R being less than A, or the electric field that exists inside this sphere with a uniform radius of A and a charge positive B. We are now going to use Gauss's law to fit, uh, just to review. So Gauss's law, the whole point is to be able to figure out the electric field, exactly what we did right there. So we're now going to go through and use Gauss's law again, that the net electric flux is equal to the closed surface integral of E dot dA, which is equal to the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by E naught. In order to use this equation, what do we have to do next? Catherine. Draw a Gaussian. Gaussian. Gaussian surface. So we're going to draw a Gaussian surface. Now, this Gaussian surface is no longer going to be outside, but rather inside our sphere. So now, this Gaussian surface looks like this. And it has a radius little r. Now, due to symmetry again, we know the electric field direction is always going to be out from the center of the sphere. That's the direction of the electric field. So on the left-hand side, please walk me through all the steps on the left-hand side with this closed surface integral of E dot dA. Mogan. Um, well... First, we can uh, we know cosine theta is e dot product dA, so we know the cosine theta is zero degrees. Okay, so why is theta zero degrees? Because they're both in the same direction. They. Uh, the field and the radius or the a. The f the electric field and the a, the area vector. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and um, so that means that cosine cancels out. And then you can pull E out because it's constant. And then you just have E times the integral dA, closed surface area integral dA. Uh -huh. And then that just cancels out the, or the D, so it's just EA. Again, we've done that three times now, and it's always going to work out that, uh, that way. We will have a couple of times where it works out to be cosine of 90 degrees. Clearly, I'll go through that when it does happen. So now, on the left hand, we have EA. Let's go one more step on the left hand side. We have the electric field times what area? What is the area then on that left hand side? John? Um, 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared. Again, that's the area of the Gaussian surface. <coughs> On the right hand side, we have the charge inside <coughs> divided by E naught. Is the charge inside the Gaussian surface still equal to positive Q? Tyler. No. No, why not? Because it's not, it doesn't have the whole sphere inside okay. it. Does not have the whole sphere inside the Gaussian surface. So it's not equal to, it's important to realize that Q inside does not equal positive Q. If Q on the inside, we know it's going to be less than positive Q. It's going to be small, some portion of positive Q. And we need to figure out what it is. Thoughts? Going to involve the volumes, yes. Uh, what does the word uniform mean? This what is the same throughout. The what density. The volumetric charge density is the same throughout. What is the equation for volumetric charge density? Loki. Um, I forgot what that symbol is called. 
Looks like a P. Looks like a P. Uh, P equals Q over V. Q over V. Okay. Looks like a P. Dorf standard is called? Rho. Rho, R H O. Rho is equal to Q over V. Now, that is a generic <coughs> equation. So, what I'm going to put is, to make it clear, I'm going to put Q total divided by the volume total. I'm also going to put the Q inside divided by the volume inside. Because we know both of those are uniform, so those are going to end up being equal to one another. We're looking for the charge inside the Gaussian surface, so that's going to be equal to the volume inside the Gaussian surface multiplied by the Q total, which is just big Q. So I need the volume inside the Gaussian surface. Nitish, please. Uh, four thirds pi r cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed is the the volume inside the Gaussian surface. What is the total volume, Yuchen, of the sphere? Four thirds pi a cubed. So notice how in this equation we have 4 pi r squared and 4 thirds pi r cubed. Please be careful. 4 thirds pi cancels out. We get the charge inside is equal to big Q times r cubed divided by a cubed. OK, uh, so now we can substitute. We'll do that down here, I guess. So this is the same Q in over E naught, Q in over E naught, Q in over E naught, Q in over E naught. And so we have big Q times little r cubed divided by A cubed times E naught. Everyone brought R squared to the party. Thank you. It took us a little while, but that's okay. So we get that the electric field is equal to Q times R divided by 4 pi E naught times A cubed. One over four pi e naught is equal to the Boltzmann's constant. So k times big Q times r divided by a Q. So if you look at it in terms of a graph, the electric field <coughs> as a function of position. Notice how k, big Q, and a Q are just numbers. So it's actually a linear relationship for the electric field until you get to the radius, which in this point, particular case is A, and then it's KQ over R squared, so it is an inverse squared relationship, so it looks like this as you get farther and farther away. That is the graph for the electric field that exists both inside and outside a positively charged object of a sphere.